Welcome to the Plato Paradigm, a paradigm shift in reading Plato's dialogues. Episode 90, Mino 76, A to C. Socrates has been trying to get Mino to tell him what virtue is. He doesn't want an example of virtue, he wants an answer which is applicable to any instance of virtue. This is unlike anything Mino has encountered before. He's used to giving lots of examples of things. This is something he's learnt from the sophist Gorgias, who teaches people how to appear to be people who know. So far as Mino is concerned, it's Socrates who has a problem. It's Socrates who wants one answer applicable to all instances of virtue. Mino was quite happy with the answers he had learnt from Gorgias, and so far as he is concerned, he still has those answers. It's Socrates who doesn't accept them. At the moment, Socrates has been giving examples of what he wants. He's been telling Mino what shape is. He's given two examples now of answers to the question, what is shape, on condition that Mino would then give him the answer concerning virtue. The first answer had been that shape is what always follows colour. And Mino had said, this is a silly answer because what if someone doesn't know what colour is? This wouldn't explain anything. Now, after the second answer, that shape is the end of solid, as if that tells us what shape is, Mino immediately asks... What is colour? Socrates should point out that Mino is supposed to be giving him an answer now about virtue. So let's see how Socrates deals with this impertinent demand. Hubristesque o menon, andri presbute pragmata prostates apocrines thai, autoste uc etheles anamnestes, Epen hotipote lege gorgias arten enai. Alepe dan moi su tut epes, o Socrates, erosoi. You deal in hubris, Mino. Hubristes is someone who performs hubris. Hubris is the characteristic of someone who transgresses, oversteps the mark, goes beyond the bounds. This sounds like a rather strong term to use with Mino, but we can imagine it like, oh, you're wicked, as a mock serious reprimand. You place problems on an older man to answer, but you yourself don't wish to recall, recollect, and say what on earth Gorgias says that virtue is. Ah, but when you tell me this, Socrates, I shall tell you. In other words, Mino is promising yet again that he will keep his end of the bargain, he will tell Socrates what virtue is. The playful reprimand is apparently something that Mino would be used to as an eromenos, someone loved, by an erastes, a lover. The lover is usually older than the loved one. Uh, Socrates is slightly more than just an older person. He's over 60 at this point, assuming that Mino is here on business before the expedition to Babylon against the king of Persia, which happened around... 402, something like that, BC, three years before Socrates was executed, and he was 70 when he died. It's almost as ridiculous to think of Socrates as an erastes at his age 
as it is to think of Gorgias as an Eromenos, as Socrates has already portrayed him in Larissa, in Thessaly. All of the aristocrats in Thessaly, the young aristocrats, are enamoured of Gorgias and his Sophia. At least that's how Socrates presents it. And we should perhaps ask ourselves why Socrates keeps emphasizing homoerotic relationships. Is it really because he is an eromenos that Mino is such an insufferable, spoilt interlocutor who doesn't keep up his end of the bargain? Whatever the case may be, the fact that Socrates makes it a humorous issue here allows Mino to feel justified in making demands and getting out of his own obligations. It's as if Socrates is manipulating the conversation yet again. When Mino promises that he will give an answer after Socrates gives his answer about colour, we know he's lying because Socrates has slipped into his request that Mino should recall what Gorgias says virtue is. And Mino has already done that. Mino has already given us a very full answer based on Gorgias's own answer. It's very generous, it's full of impressive vocabulary and examples. This is clearly supposed to be Gorgias's answer, and Mino has remembered it very well. There's no indication in this dialogue, which Plato had written, that Mino is not recalling Gorgias's answer properly. If we recall what has been going on in this dialogue, Socrates has already abandoned Gorgias. Earlier he said, since Mino and Gorgias agree, then Mino can speak for himself. We don't need to know what Gorgias said. And then immediately he brings Gorgias back in. This isn't the first time that Socrates has used the verb to recollect, and it's worth us remembering that recollection has been used twice in this dialogue, both times for Mino having to recall what Gorgias says. We should also remember that it is Socrates who uses this verb, and it's Socrates who's, who uses this verb for this particular application. We remember, or at least Mino is supposed to remember, something that Gorgias said. I'm laboring a point which at the moment is not obvious, but it will become important later on. Mino has just promised yet again to give an answer after Socrates has given his answer, and this is how Socrates reacts. Can kata kekalumenos tis gnoie o menon dialego menusu hoti kalos e kai erastai soi eti e sin tide even someone blindfolded would know, Mino, hearing you conversing, that you are handsome and still have erastai, lovers. Why is that then? So Socrates is still playing the erastes to Mino's eromenos. Socrates here is giving a compliment, but in the form of a riddle. How is it that anyone blindfolded would know that Mino is handsome? Surely you should see that he is handsome. Socrates adds the further compliment that this blindfolded person would also know that Mino had lovers, or rather still has lovers. The implication is that Mino is getting a bit old to be 
an Eromenos, but he still has it, and he has lovers even now. Still, it's intriguing that even someone blindfolded would know this, and this is what Mino reacts to. Now, let's do some recollection of our own. A long time ago, Socrates asked a very strange question. If someone knew Mino not at all, he had absolutely no idea about Mino, he wouldn't know whether he was handsome or noble or well-born, or even the opposite. And Mino immediately goes on to another topic, but we're beginning to see that one of the subjects in this dialogue is virtually epistemology. They don't have the word epistemology, but the question how we know things keeps coming up. So let's see how a blindfolded person would know that Mino is handsome and still has lovers. Hoti uden alle epitates en tois logois, hopper poius in hoi trufontes, at e turaniuontes he osan en hore osin, kai hama emu isos kategnokas hoti emi heton ton kalon. Because you do nothing but command in the conversation, which indeed is what spoiled people do, since they play the tyrant so long as they are in season. And perhaps at the same time you've figured me out that I cannot resist handsome people. Literally, I am less than handsome people. So the blindfolded person would hear that Mino commands. Mino commands because he can. His lovers are enamored of his beauty and therefore Mino can demand of them whatever he wants in return for whatever it is he gives them. And this seems to be the case here. Mino is demanding things of Socrates as if he knows that Socrates is enamored of his beauty. And Socrates has to play this up to keep the conversation going. Mino can demand all he likes, but he's also aware that at some point he has to do Socrates a favor, whatever that might be. The biggest favour he could do Socrates at the moment is begin to think dialectically and actually try to answer the question, what is virtue, in such a way that the answer would be applicable to every instance of virtue. As it is, we will have to wait until next time to get Socrates' answer to the question, what is color?